Ah, uh, here we go. Hello. My name is Walter Broner, but I have a feeling most of you may remember me as uh, Frenchy. That was the nickname given to me by the soccer coach, Mr. Broccoloni, and it apparently proved, uh, proved somewhat prescient as uh, several years later, I got to play the French ambassador in the musical of the I Sing that was in the fall of 1972 and probably uh, that's how many of you may remember me from those days. Um, I'm a graduate of class of 1973 of Princeton High School and have some wonderful memories of that time especially because um, I'm still in touch with so many people from those days and um, just as they were wonderful in those days, they're still wonderful, uh, which is quite a feat for anyone. Um, probably the, the most important things uh, that I remember about uh, high school was, of course, the fact that I had just recently arrived in Princeton. I really didn't know anybody. Uh, I had come from across the big water uh, that's across the Atlantic Ocean, and uh, I was just beginning to learn English for real. Uh, obviously it was a time of adolescence, a very intense time. Um, I spent a lot of time catching up on uh, American culture in general and specific culture of Princeton in particular. I would say those years were characterized for me by uh, several major uh, uh, events and, and experiences. Uh, one was of course being a member of the class of Mrs. Peskin, to whom all of the foreign students uh, who, for whom English was a second, third, or fourth language were assigned to. Um, and there I met many of my friends, of, with whom I remain friends to this day. Um, most of us were, uh, had only a passing acquaintance with the English language, but we did not usually have a language in common, so we spent a lot of time um, practicing our English since it was the only way to communicate. Um, the second community that I was really a part of was the soccer team and, and some of those great guys I'm still friends with, of course, um, and some of them still play soccer. Amazingly enough, here we are in our mid-50s and we still refuse to give up uh, the cleats. Um, and it's, uh, although I did not play in my senior year, uh, I played the previous uh, three seasons with the team and, uh, and uh, had a great time uh, playing my favorite sport. Uh, the third group uh, that I was really involved with was of course the drama group and I had joined that group sometime during my sophomore year uh, through the, uh, I was introduced in, to it by my good friend Steve Holmes who was doing a lot of uh, set construction, occasionally directing, occasionally acting in the various productions. Um, I was very shy, I was uh, not very confident about my English, especially the pronunciation, if you will. And uh, so uh, I wasn't ready to try out, even though what I really wanted to be was on stage. And eventually, of course, like every actor, what I really wanted to do was to direct, which I did get to do at PHS. But in any case, that was a group that I really spent the majority of my time with, uh, including uh, a lot of time skipping class or after class or before class in the black hole. Uh, those of you who have ever hung out in the black hole or have ever passed by the black hole know exactly what I mean. Uh, it was a wonderful space to, uh, to kind of decompress, uh, prepare, uh, and many games of bridge were played uh, in that space. Uh, that was one of the uh, um, things that the group uh, used to do a lot when we were not constructing sets, gathering props, practicing, and all that sort of stuff. Um, I really did not mingle much with uh, many of the other groups. Um, uh, and uh, for those of you who remember those or, of those other groups, I will name a few, the Preppy Kids, the uh, Chorus and Choir Kids, the Greasers, the Black Kids. I guess in terms of uh, being a member of the Black Kids, uh, this was not something that one would uh, just choose to to do. One one had to have a, a certain genetic predisposition. Um, that is not politically correct, but I'm throwing it in anyway. 
So those were uh, wonderful years and um, uh, I would just like to mention a few other events that I think many of you will remember. One was of course the spring of 1970 big strike where the Princeton High School became uh, the little brother to the big strike at, uh, at Princeton University. Uh, there was of course the occupation of um, the IDA complex um, where uh, right before lighting up a lot of joints uh, we the revolutionaries basically trashed the place um, eventually being thrown out of there uh, but there was also a strike at the high school and there was self-taught and uh, wonderful teachings on the front lawn uh, spring is a wonderful time for protests especially when it doesn't rain I, I learned that uh, first uh, firsthand uh, years later when I when I spent ma many an afternoon at various protests for various wonderful causes. Um, another event I'd like to mention is of course, uh, and it was either 70 or 71, can't remember, was the first Earth Day um, and at that time uh, the parking lot uh, right next to the auditorium was getting constructed. Um, this was another case of the paving of paradise to put up a parking lot and of course we protested and the more brave of us uh, tried to uh, disable and otherwise uh, vandalize the uh, construction equipment that was there at the site. Um, that parking lot is there still and no paradise has regrown in its place uh, such as the way of the world. Uh, there was also at one point and I think it may have been already in my junior year there was a big racially motivated fight and one thing I remember from that was uh, there was a big assembly trying to calm everybody down and one of the black students pulled out his hair pick and said would that be considered a weapon and of course he got a lot of laughs and no good answer from the administration uh, let's see if there was anything else that I remember uh, very very distinctly from those days. One thing I do remember is that people were very much more relaxed about uh, underage drinking and underage drugs. Uh, there wasn't this constant uh, uh, big brother and big parent watchfulness right now. I was always amazed that I could go to parties where vast quantities of beer were consumed and the next day it seemed that no one got into trouble when the parents got back from wherever it is that they went to while the party was going on. Uh, the same was true obviously for smoking weed where um, there was absolutely no way that uh, the returning parents would not have noticed that what had been going on uh, during the party. Um, those were the days. Uh, I'm not sure if we won them back uh, and I'm not sure if they could ever be brought back uh, but they were indeed wonderful days and not just because um, uh, youth is wasted on the young and, and it was certainly probably wasted on the class of the 1973 of Princeton High School. I think my, uh, my, my first intense memory of uh, Princeton High School was uh, the first week of freshman year. This was uh, September 1969 and I was well aware that the uh, popular hazing right at that time was for the upperclassmen, I don't know if it was only seniors, to catch the freshmen and uh, smear their clothes and faces or any other exposed part of their body or clothing with lipstick. Um, I think we started class right after uh, Labor Day and the Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday of that week I had managed somehow to be very invisible and not get marked and, and I almost lasted the whole week because sometime late on Friday uh, finally someone uh, um, confronted me and, and of course I gave him that old um, uh, deer caught in the headlights look. Uh, they recognized that I was indeed a freshman probably due to my small size at the time, if, if nothing else, and uh, they uh, smeared my face, which was better than smearing my clothes, as everybody knows. It's, it's just about impossible to get lipstick off of any clothes. Um, other things that I would like to mention are 
Uh, the fact that when I started in uh, my freshman year, uh, we still had s this, this tradition called study hall. And at that time, study hall was either held in the cafeteria if it wasn't a, uh, if it wasn't one of the lunch periods, or in the um, large auditorium that we had. And when I was assigned to study hall my freshman year, it was in the cafeteria, so it may have been period two or three. Uh, and I got assigned to the table where I got to sit right next to Paul Riddell. Uh, he was a senior at the time, and he was uh, six foot five inches tall, as I recall. Uh, I was barely five foot two on a good day at that time. And so every time uh, I arrived at the table and we were sort of standing up, um, I was reminded how insignificant puny and freshman I was compared to Big Paul. Um, to his credit, he always treated me very nicely and fairly. Um, I used to sit there in study hall and instead of actually studying, I used to sketch in my notebook a drawing pictures of uh, buildings and cities as I was already planning on becoming an architect um, and getting some uh, wonderfully considered attention from Paul and some of his uh, junior and senior buddies who uh, were actually complimentary about my uh, my rudimentary drawing effort that I had, uh, considering a sign of certain maturity that I actually had a clue about what I might do after high school. That was a wonderful uh, beginning experience. Uh, I want to mention just some more things about uh, about playing the French ambassador at, in Of the I Sing, which we put on in the fall of 1972. Um, for that uh, final school year, uh, I had become part of the uh, Drama Super Council, which was headed by Larry Mansier, an English teacher and sponsor of the drama at, uh, at uh, the high school. Uh, other members of the Super Council were Michael Godnick, um, who worked on a lot of the publicity and actually got to direct uh, the prime of Miss Jean Brody late in the year. And of course, Sarah Jane Lithgow, who was sort of a general, um, I suppose, artistic director uh, of the exercise uh, of, of this whole uh, venture. Uh, I was supposedly in charge of the sets, uh, and when it came time to um, putting on of the I Sing, uh, which we had wanted to put on before the 1972 presidential elections. Uh, I was involved in a set which was designed by the wonderfully talented Chris Loy. Uh, I also had wanted to try out for dancing in the show. And as it turned out, when I got, I was sitting in the back of the auditorium watching the other auditions when Bill Cook, the wonderful Bill Cook, motioned to me and said, Walter, come up here and read for this part. And um, that's how I became the French ambassador. Um, and I got to ask for Karen Besser, uh, who played Ms. Devereaux, uh, for her child to be returned to France, as it was obviously a French citizen and, uh, and belonged to France, not to the United States. Uh, it was a wonderful production for those of you who remember it, even with my froggy voice kind of spoiling the musical portion of the program. Back in Princeton in, uh, in the time between 1969 and 1973, when I was a student at Princeton High School, uh, it was a wonderful time in, in, in the history of this country as it was transitioning from the wild and wonderful 60s into the supposed mid-decade. Um, I don't think that was quite true, as, uh, as I think we were very, very engaged in the world. Uh, certainly the strike after the Cambodia incursion 
uh, was the proof of the fact that we cared about the events around the world. Uh, the same was true uh, of the, um, our, our, our great involvement in First Earth Day and all of the stuff that went on. I think uh, the, the lessons of, uh, of those days in terms of protesting things that you don't feel are quite right with the world has carried on with uh, my generation and we still go out there and protest things that we, uh, we feel are wrong with the world. Uh, one of the wonderful experiences in town that probably everybody remembers is, are the uh, soccer games that were organized by the youth organization Flight 2. The wonderful thing about those games was of course that uh, ball, which would have been quite unfortunate for the crowd of hundred and more that usually participated in these games. So usually five or six uh, uh, balls were out there uh, to be kicked around and, and in fact what, what seemed to happen was that several games would, uh, would be involved. Uh, when these games happen in Mark 1 Park, uh, the benches would be used as a goal. One had to hit the ball against the goal to, to, to score and uh, of course there would be people actually sitting on the benches smoking, smoking grass and that's what made the whole experience even more hallucinatory and uh, also very early 70s. Um, many of you probably also remember a lot of the uh, uh, great uh, young people playing rock and roll music in the park. I remember some wonderful concerts in Marquand Park um, involving uh, our very own uh, Charlie Roth and the Bordash Brothers. Um, there was the wonderful Fordham Blues Band, which uh, many of us remember fondly um, for playing, having played some, some kick-ass music in those days. Uh, those were in, in, indeed wonderful days. The other thing to remember is uh, how many of our fellow classmates were pioneers in this wonderful world of uh, computing. Um, I almost got involved with the Fortran club, uh, but didn't seem like I just quite had the, uh, what, it, what it took to fit in with uh, those wonderful folks. Um, most of them be later on, and, and who are members of the Resistors Club, look it up on the web, uh, they, uh, they became indeed pioneers in some of the, uh, uh, in some of the digital world, writing the, uh, the uh, internet for, for dummies books, and writing Bibles for dealing with uh, the, uh, the uh, not Netflix, it's the it's the operating system. Uh, Chris Negus will tell you what it is. I can't remember uh, the name right now. It's, um, it's uh, Linux. That's the one. The Linux Bible, Redhead Bible, and some of those other Bibles. That's what Chris, uh, Chris writes. And of course, there's, uh, there's Margie Levine Young, um, uh, who I'm friends uh, on Facebook with and very proud of. All kinds of wonderful people who. Uh, who are creating this great digital world uh, in which we live in nowadays. One, one thing to remember about uh, the class of 1973 and really classes from 69 to probably 78 or so is how remarkable the people who were at the Princeton High School at the time were at that time and then became. Uh, there are many doctors among us. Uh, there are architects like myself. Um, there are people who remain with drama and acting or with performing arts, both theater and film. Uh, and there are people in sort of more ordinary professions or walks of life, but I think all of them were extraordinary because I without the whole mix of all the different people, probably our experience at Princeton High School would have been more sterile and ordinary and, and, and stereotypical. Uh, obviously, this has a lot to do with the fact that we were indeed in Princeton, home of one of the best universities on the planet. Um, and so many of us were children of 
uh, people involved with uh, the academia or involved uh, with various professional endeavors and technical endeavors uh, that were being practiced in various businesses around there. Let's not forget there was the RCA uh, Research Center, the Sarnoff Center, at which many of our parents worked. Um, there were also a lot of people who commuted to uh, New York City in those days and worked at various amazing places over there. So all of us kids had the, um, had the luck, the chance to, to get exposed to just an incredible wide world of, um, of knowledge, of arts, uh, of science. Um, and we interacted and mingled and we had a wonderful place and some incredibly, incredibly talented and generous teachers. And because of that, uh, we were able to acquire some of the skills and attitudes that helped us later on in life. Uh, the wonderful thing, of course, nowadays with the social media that's available on the internet is that we are reconnecting and rediscovering people people we may not have been great friends with before, we are now great friends with. Um, and as uh, a wonderful leader for the 40th reunion, Liz Garman Davis, uh, reminds us, forget the cliques, forget the groups, forget what was happening 40 years ago. Um, we're now in our mid-50s. Uh, we have uh, lived for a long, long time, have done things, have kids, have had kids, have had grandkids, um, and now it's time to forget all of those differences that uh, uh, seem to matter so much in those days, and instead to enjoy the fact that we have uh, lived so long and had such wonderful experience in there, and still have so much to do in our lives. Um, and a lot of the reason why we are able to do all those things, why we're able to do them so joyously, so wonderfully and, and still be so creative is the fact that we were part of the Princeton High School class of 1973.